trying to finish this up so that I can get on to uh, No Limits rules that I'm about to play. And I want to make sure I know them, and I'm going to try to read them as well. I also might do something um, at a game that just ended, Global um, YouTube Wars, Season 7 Reloaded. And uh, there was a sixth turn where um, I might put a, um, you know those the section of the newspaper where it goes, uh, checkmate in one move. I might, might put that out there and see what you guys think of what could have been done. I've got one guy saying to me, um, you could have taken back London. And I'm saying to him, I think if I would have taken back London, I would have taken London for a turn um, with three troops on the aisle, uh, held it for a turn by blocking and depleting my navy, uh, got the ten guys on the land, uh, eight more guys, maybe a few planes, and then the uh, within two turns been swept off the island again. But anyways, so I might do that because that would be fun. I see what you guys think. Uh, the rules in this section, global rules, describe how to combine Axis Knowledge Europe with AA Pacific to play them together in a single game. These rules replace their counterpart rules in uh, Europe 40 and Pacific 40. Okay, so just to start off, this is ridiculous. Um, the next one needs to be one box, one game. Really nice. We'll pay a lot of money for it. We'll pay $200 for it. Make it nice. Make it one game. What are you doing? All right. That off my chest. Follow the rules and set up information found in both Europe 40, Pacific 40, unless otherwise indicated in this rule set. Consult the Europe 40 when looking for rules dealing with the basic game system, including combat movements, conduct combat, non-com, unit profiles, and so on. Consult the global, uh, Pacific 40 when dealing with the game system unique to that game, such as Kamikaze Strikes, rules specific to China, and so on. Oh my goodness, that's right, i got to read that. If you know how to play the two games individually, you, must, you mostly know how to play the combined game already. How the war is won. The Axis win the war by controlling eight victory cities on the Europe side or six on the Pacific side. Six is too little. Um, as long as they control an Axis capital at the end of that round. The Axis allies win by controlling Berlin, Rome, and Tokyo. All of them for a complete round of play as long as they control an allied capital. Um, so unless there's a great disparity of um, skill level, you're never going to see an allied victory. Um, unless there's a disparity of play level, which point you would. So let me see here. Number of players. Okay, so then it breaks down into how, who plays who. I'll skip that over. Setup. Uh, link the western edge of the Pacific map with the eastern edge. Okay, and then there's some... Okay, I'm going to skip down. Setup units as shown on the setup chart found in the Pacific 1940 and Europe 1940. Additionally, place the following... Amora, Saka, Briatia, Egypt. Get those units. The powers start with the following IPC income levels and treasures. This is really bad. Uh, I get these boxes and they all say the wrong thing. Kind of drives you crazy. So there should be additional boxes. If you wanted to sell them separately, you need to sell some global components that actually make sense, right? I mean, I'm looking at these boxes and going, how do you get that? You can keep track of IPC treasures during the game, treasuries during the game using the IPC tracking chart on page four. Order of play. Another problem. Okay, the setup isn't the setup. The setup is right here. This is the real setup for the Allies. Starts at number four. After the Ger J Japanese and the Germans have kicked your butt with the advantage they have at the beginning of the game, they then get to savage you again and then you have a setup. So it's not I mean, I mean, to say this is the order of play is ridiculous is just. Uh, I like, uh, I've got one right now. I'm about to play China first. What a difference that would make. That's really big. Um, in my rules for handicapping, I like France goes first. If you're playing against someone of superior skill or the Axis keep winning, have France go first. If the Axis still keep winning, have Anzac go first. Uh, I do think I like the, what's coming out now, Far East Command. 
uh, the combination of Anzac and uh, UK. Um, the breaking down of UK into the di uh, different parts is, again, Axis wet dream. I mean, it's just unable to do what you need to do um, because you're just so fragmented. And instead of having an advantage over it, it rarely uh, comes into play that Anzac's able to come in and sort of one-two punch everything. So I think the, the allies all ought to go together. I would say, um, let's say China goes first. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, I guess I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into that foray. Uh, I like the uh, very, uh, I like a varied um, start, but uh, then you wouldn't be able to have all those beautiful access videos that describe exactly what you should do and hold your hand the whole way through. Oh, you wouldn't have those. If you had some sort of variable startup, no one could hold your hands. Oh, poor little baby. Oh, you poor little guy. No one could tell you exactly what to do. Sorry, getting a little sarcastic there. Sorry, that's biting. Okay, uh, so I'm not big on the order of play. Um, these guys are just set up so, they're stoked so much. Um, I would say if it's 1940, it's the funny war. It's the funny war, and I like that as a, um, at least as a variant. So the funny war, that would mean the Atlantic was still um, contested. Uh, Soviet Union, no, nothing would go on. Uh, China would go on, and North Africa would go on. But other than that, nobody would do much. You could do, you know, naval stuff in the pack, um, I suppose, I think. But in general, this is called the uh, the January of the year was called Phony War. And I'm just... If you want to give the UK, for instance, more ships so Germany can beat the snot out of UK and UK still has ships, okay, I'm okay with that. If you want to give um, uh, the United States more ships, there's not, uh, there's not a battleship at Hawaii out there right now. There's no battleships. What? Huh? Uh, so, you know, you want to give, uh, you want to give the U.S. something out there that, uh, so that if the Japanese decide to beat up on them, they actually have, uh, they're going to be degraded. But right now you've got situations where Germany can walk away from turn one and barely having lost anything. And the, uh, uh, the U.K. ending up losing a hundred dollars. It's just silly. Uh, Japan is all set. I mean, it. I don't know what to do with Japan because Japan is set up for 41. It's not set up for 40. It's it's uh, it's just stoked. It's it's in 41. It's already achieved everything it needs to achieve by 41 in order to go to war. Um, not sure what you want to do about that. I would say you juice the UK income by at least 20. You let China go first. Um, you combine the income for uh, Anzac and India, um, and you devalue China so that uh, not every territory is a single one. Because guess what? China was more, uh, was more of a hassle than it was an advantage. Okay, let's go on. Set up. Okay, so UK is one power that is two separate uh, um, economies, Europe and Pacific, the economy, economy. Income level and in the IPC treasuries for the two economies are traded separately. The Union Jack National Controller Marker R for tracking the Pacific economy income on the national production chart. The Europe in economy includes all the territories controlled by the UK on the Europe map. London is its regional capital. The Pacific economy includes all the territories controlled by the United States on the Pacific map. Calcutta is in its regional capital. There are two exceptions to this regional division. West India on the Europe side is part of the Pacific uh, economy and the North Af American territories on the Pacific map are part of the Europe economy. Either economy can pay all or part of the cost of conducting research and development. The results, the results apply to the power as a whole. Each of the UK, Europe, and Pacific makes its own separate purchases and repairs. All combat moves, combat non-coms are made and conducted as any other power's single united force. Uh, UK uh, mobilizes its uh, new units purchased by such 
each economy at industrial complexes that fall under that economy. Each of the two economies' incomes should be separately collected and maintained. This includes any income conducted, deducted for convict disruptions or awarded for national ad- objective income. And I would say, the, um, the honestly speaking, I would think uh, Far East Command uh, or ANZAC and uh, UK PAC should go at the same time as UK Europe. Come on, we got an imbalance game here. We got a really simple solution, and everyone ignores it like like you can't see it, like in all other Access and Allies games previous to this, that's exactly what would happen. What the what? How do you not make that simple calculation? They all attack at once. Capture of one of UK's regional capitals. If one of the regional capitals is captured by the Axis, it will surrender any unspent IPCs that its economy has in its treasury to the capturing capital, capturing power. Any an economy whose capital is held by the Axis can't collect income, spend IPCs, or repair units. The free regional capital may never collect IPCs that would normally go to the captured regional capital, even if such territories are recaptured from the Axis. Other allied powers can temporarily take control of any original UK territory that would otherwise be liberated when its regional capital has been captured by the uh, Axis. So that's silly too, right? I mean, you got an island nation, and somehow... They can't turn around and go from to England, and now they can't go to Calcutta. They can't go from Calcutta and turn around and go to Sydney or to uh, Ottawa or to England. Of course they can. That's silly. Uh, but you've got to you've got to tie the ba- uh, the arms of the ax- allies behind their back in order to make this game seem fair. And then everyone goes, "Oh, that's the rules. That's the rules. That's the rules." It's ridiculous. These rules don't make sense. Of course they can collect income. If Berlin or Rome is captured by the UK, the IPCs go to the uh, Europe uh, economy's treasure. If Tokyo is captured, the IPCs go to the Pacific economy's treasure. This applies even if the receiving economy's regional capital is held by the Axis. (laughs) Again, so stupid. That is just to make it a quote-unquote fair game doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You take Japan with England, but because India is held, you don't get any benefit. That makes a lot of sense. Come on. Come on, son. Movement between maps, east and west. Uh, You can do that yourself. Uh, Political situations and national objectives. Germany, Japan, and Italy uh, make up the axis. For the moment, the UK, Anzac, France, and China make up the allies. The United States and Soviet Union are neutral. During this period, many other countries tried to remain neutral as well. As the war became global, many neutrals were forced to join one side or the other. The following rules reflect the growth and development of the historical situation events from 1940 on. These rules replace the political situation and the national objectives and bonus income rules in ANA Pacific and ANA Europe, except for the rules on neutral territories on pages 10 and 11 of that rulebook. All right, I'm just going to skip down. Political situation. Germany is at war with France, UK, Anzac. Germany may declare war in the United States, Soviet Union, or China at the beginning of the combat move phase of any of its turns. A state of war between Germany and any one of these three won't affect its relations with the other two. National objectives and bonuses. Oh, brother. All right, so five, like I said, hate these. Uh, five, that's the same. Uh, if not at war with Soviet Union, five each. Okay, just okay, when when Germany is at war with UK and France, five. If there's one land in Egypt, same. Five if Germany controls both Denmark and Norway, while Sweden is either neither pro allies nor allied controlled. Um, there, like I said, there should be because of this, there should be convoys in there. Um, this is five is way too much. Uh, all these are way too much. Two IPCs. Okay, that's the same thing. National objective. There's no Novosibirsk. The nine was for the um, the Far East territories, um, and it gets nothing. It gets no advantages. No nothing. It's just the same because you know, all of the national ninety uh, percent of these national advantages are for the Axis. So the Axis will win, uh, or quote unquote have a chance to win. I know. Fair game. 
Uh, let's see, political situation. At the beginning of the game, Japan is at war with China. Japan considers movement of units into China by any other allied powers an act of war against it. When not yet at war with the United States, in addition to the normal restrictions, Japan may not end the movement of sea units within two sea zones of the U.S. mainland territory, Western United States and Alaska. I did not know that. Japan may declare a war on the UK, Anzac, U US, France, or Soviet Union at the beginning of the com combat move phase of any of its turns. Declaration of war by Japan against either of the United States or Anzac will immediately result in a state of war between Japan and both of those powers. A state of war between Japan and France or between Japan and the uh, Soviet Union will not affect relations between Japan and the United States and vice versa. Japan may attack Dutch territories only if a state of war exists between it and the United States and Anzac. National objectives and bonus income. Japan's objective uh, 10 if not at war with the United States, 5 if Axis um, if Axis control the following Guam, Midway, Wake, Gilbert, and Solomon, 5 if uh, Japan controls uh, Calcutta. So just looking at Calcutta, by the way, which is worth three dollars, and now you're more you're worth Calcutta's worth more than Berlin. Calcutta's worth more than Moscow. Calcutta is worth more with that bonus than UK. Calcutta is worth more than most anything except the United States. Silly. Just plain silly. Too much money. Make it men. Make it one man. That's it. Um, if uh, five, if the Axis control all the following Sumatra, Java, Borneo, and Celebs. Um, I might go with... This one was big, and I will admit this one was big. Uh, these 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 islands right here, <laughs> they're just air bases, right? I mean, that's what they were, air bases and a port in a storm. But uh, this one, this one might be worth this five bucks, but I'm hesitant. All right, let's go down here. Uh, political situation with the United States begins war with no one in addition to normal restrictions. While it's not at war with Japan, the United States may not move any units into or through China or end the movement of any sea units and sea zones that are adjacent to Japanese-controlled territories. While not at war with Germany or Italy, the United States may end the movement of sea units on the Europe map only in sea zones that are adjacent to the U.S. territories, with one exception, U.S. warships may also conduct long-range patrols in sea zone 102. The United States may not declare war on any Axis power, unless an Axis power either declares war on its first, uh, on it first, or captures London or any other territory in North America, or Japan makes an unprovoked attack, declaration of war against the UK or ANZAC, after which it may declare war on any or all Axis powers in its on its following turn. However, if it is not yet at war by the collect income phase of its third turn, the United States may declare war on any or all Allied powers at the beginning of the phase. This is an exception to the rules for declaring war, which may normally be done only at the beginning of the combat move. Okay, so big problems with this. If you want this rule to go into effect, um, Japan, America needs that 72 bucks right away. It, it's just, again, ridiculous. Um, they are held out of the war. They're constrained unnecessarily. Um, they had to get stuff... Uh, it, they just should have $72 at the beginning, um, and they should go up from there. There is very little chance for America to actually go up in income uh, for the most part, or income that will eventually not be seceded back to an ally like Normandy Bordeaux. They should have some. If you're going to play with these rules, give them 72 bucks at the very beginning. Don't wait. Um, I don't like these rules. I think it should be turn two, not turn three. Um but if you want these rules, it you should be able to do stuff, like build stuff. National objective and bonus income. Ten if they control all. Okay, this is ridiculous. This this is not a bonus. Okay, that's not a bonus. Just give them that. They're worth that. This is a bonus, and again, I wouldn't make it money. Um, and then Philippines, uh, they control Mexico, Southeast Mexico, Central America, East, West Indies. Um uh, they control Alaska, Aleutians, Hawaiian, Johnson Line. Uh, and if one uh, land unit in the ter territory of France. Okay, if you're doing that, by the way, it's like the, it's like the Berlin thing. If you're doing that, you don't need the money. Uh, so these are all late game 
Um, this is early game, and this is I'm, again not big big fan of the money, but uh, but this this is late game. This is late game. So bonus, not a bonus, not helpful. Um, China political situation. China begins the war at uh, game at war with China. China cannot declare war. Which Japan? China cannot declare war on a European Axis power unless one of these those powers either first declares war on China or moves into a territory into which Chinese units are allowed to move. A state of war between China and one of the Axis powers won't affect its relationship with the other Axis power. China's objective is to resist Japanese expansion into China um, and established support from other powers in the struggle against Japan. To reflect this objective, China collects bonus income of, uh, during each of its collective phase in the following situation. When war, when, it, when China is at war, six IPCs, if the Burma road is totally open, allied par- players must control Burma, Yunnan, Su, Sichuan for t- this to occur. China is also permitted to purchase artillery if the Burma road is open. Okay, UK, political situation, UK... The UK, along with France, begins the game of war with Italy and Germany. The uh, UK may declare a war on Japan at the beginning of its combat move phase of any of its turn, resulting in the state of war between Japan and both UK and ANZAC when not at war with Japan. In addition to the normal restrictions, the UK may not move into or through China. It may, however, move units into Dutch territories as non-combat moves at any time, as long as those territories have not been captured by an Axis power. It may actually take control of Dutch territories, gain their IPC value, thank you, <laughs> by moving land units into them. Additionally, the UK considers attacks against any Dutch territory to be an act of war against it directly. Once a Dutch territory has been captured by an Axis power, however, it may be captured and controlled by any power. National objective and bonus income. Uh, the So this is uh, five if the UK controls all of its original territories. And five, if the UK controls Kwangtung and Malaya. And again, when would you ever get this? Late game. You would never get this early game. This one, I mean, it's just, you just, here, here's a possibility of 10. One is impossible unless you're completely winning the game. And then you look at Japan's and go, wow. You look at India's, uh, um, Germany's, and go, wow. Okay, so you're going to say to me, well, what about America? This one doesn't even count because it doesn't even count. That's just silly. Um, the others, yes, there's a lot to do. Italy, political situation. At the beginning of the game, Italy is at war with France, UK, and ANZAC. Italy made declare a war in the United States and Soviet Union or China at the beginning of the combat move phase of any of its turns. A state of war between Italy and one of its three powers will not affect the relation of the other two. Axis. Uh, national objective and bonus income. So what do we got? Five, there's no Axis allied surface ships in the Med. Med. Five, if you have Gibraltar, Southern France. Yeah, those are all the same ones. As before, now we have Anzac 2, which we didn't read on. Oh, Pippers. Okay. Um. Oh, dang it. All right, Anzac. Um, Anzac begins the war uh, at war with Germany and Italy, both of which are on the other side of the world. Anzac may declare war in Japan at the beginning of the combat move of any of its turns, resulting in a state of war between Japan and both Anzac and the United Kingdom. When not yet at war with Japan, in addition to the normal restrictions, the Anzac may not move units into and through China. It may, however, move units into Dutch territories. That's non-combat move at any time, as long as those territories have not been captured by an Axis power. It may actually take control of Dutch territories, gaining their IPC income by moving land units into them. Additionally, ANZAC considers tax against any Dutch territory to be an act of war against it directly. National objective and bonus income. ANZAC gets five if it controls Malaya and ANZAC controls all of its original territories. Um, and five if Dutch New Guinea, New Guinea, New Britain, and the Solomon Islands. Um, France. Uh, France is at war with Germany and Italy. France may declare a war on Japan at the beginning of the combat move phase of any of its turns. The player controlling France will manage all the events related to France that occur during any power's turns. France will man- be managed as separately controlled power, including the French IPC income. 
economy. So for purposes of simplification, this game doesn't deal with the German installment of the Vichy government in France. Troop bonuses. When the territory of France is liberated by the Allies, the player controlling France immediately places his or her choice of up to 12 IPCs worth of any French units on the territory of France for free. This happens only once per game. So apparently this happens only once per game, but you can steal the capital money many, many times. Got it. All right. Uh, beginning of the Gibb War, um, America has only minor complexes. They upgrade the major at no costs. Um, when uh, when war begins, uh, when the, when the United States enters a state of war and may be used as such immediately, um, they may be upgraded prior to that way in a normal way. Oh, I did not think of that. San Francisco is not considered to be a power, so the United States doesn't lose its unspent IPCs if the United States, Western United States is captured. The Soviet Mongol defense. Um, okay, fine. Due to their mutual border conflict with Japan in 1939, the United Soviet Union and Mongolia had a special relationship. The Mongolian territories will never become pro Axis unless one or more of them is attacked by the Soviet Union. Also, if Japan attacks any Soviet controlled territory, that is adjacent to any Mongolian territory, all Mongolian territories that are still strict, neutral, or pro allies and have joined the Allies as a result of failed Japanese attack, are placed under the control of the Soviet Union at the end of the Japan's conduct combat phase. This is done in the same manner as though the Soviet Union had moved land units to friendly neutral territory. These territories have Soviet control markers placed on them, and their standing army units are placed on the board using Soviet pieces and are controlled by the Soviet Union player from then on. This occurs Regardless of the state of relationship between the state, Soviet Union and Japan at the time of the attack, with one except, exception, if the Soviet Union attacks Korea or any Japan-controlled territory bordering these Mongolian territories, while Mongolia is still a strict neutral, Mongolia will remain neutral and not al ally itself with the Soviet Union. Okay. In all other, in all other respects and all other purposes, the Mongolian territories are treated as any other strict neutral. For example, if the Mongolian territory is attacked by Japan while well, it's still strict neutral, all the other strict neutrals will become pro-allies. So that's silly, of course. Why would Mongolia, why would Venezuela care about Mongolia? It doesn't. Spoiler alert. Okay, so uh, this is an optional rule, which, of course, drives me crazy because technology was not a little part of Axis and Allies. Well, oh, come on now. It's too much given the chance. It's uh, too de dependent upon luck, says the whiner. No, it was a real part of Axis and Allies. It was a real part of World War II. It should be in the game. It should not be optional. This is ridiculous that even anybody ever writes the term no research rules allowed. Um, so, buy research dice, roll research dice, roll breakthrough dice, mark development. Uh, the big problem I have with this is that if you don't succeed, you're, you don't get to keep the research token as you did in um, Anniversary, uh, which you should be able to. And uh, you should be able to direct uh, the breakthrough charts. could be a little more broken down. Uh, uh, so, I guess I would roll. I would break these charts down one more time. And then... Uh, into four parts, uh, three parts maybe, and then be able to really track with, for instance, aircraft um, or radar sonar um, and submarines. You know, so break this up into three different parts so that you could really specify what you want to do uh, with these. Um, I will roll, th uh, go through them because I got a few minutes left. Advanced artillery. Each of your artillery can now provide greater support. One artillery unit can support up to two. Uh, um, that's cool. Uh, rocketry, your uh, air bases can now launch rockets. Okay, so a reason for the air, air bases, but we could also go with actual pieces on the board um, that could be purchased, maybe. Uh, but if you're going to keep air bases, then okay, whatever. Um, you could also go with industrial complexes. Uh, this attack does, does one die roll of damage to the facility. Uh, rockets may not be fired over neutral territories. 
Does that make sense to you? No, it doesn't. Of course not. Uh, during the strategic uh, and tactical bombing raid step of your conduct combat phase each turn, each of your operative air bases, each of them can make a single rocket attack against an enemy industrial complex air base or naval base within four spaces. So pretty big. Uh, paratroopers, up to two of your infantry in each with an air base can be moved to an enemy controlled territory three or few, fewer spaces away that is being attacked by your land units from adjacent territories or or, and or by amphibious assault. When moving, paratroopers must obey the same restrictions that air units do. If the territory being attacked has, uh, excuse me, AAA guns, the paratrooper units are subject to the anti-aircraft fire in the same way as the air units. If attacking along with land units from adjacent territories, paratroopers may retreat as normal. Okay, so um, I would say this is, uh, air, paratroopers shouldn't be optional. Not sure why they are. Um, in, in a lot of ways, I don't think any of these should be optional. I think they should be in a graduated chart that has some sort of calendar to it. Calendar year 1940, calendar year 1940, fall, uh, spring, fall, spring, fall, or, you know, and whatever. And you get stuff according to when historically they got them, but we'll keep going. Increased factory production. Each of your uh, industrial complexes can now produce additional units. That's cool. Uh, major up to 12, minors up to 4, um, and you can remove 2 damage for the cost of 1. Um, war Bonds. During your collect phase, roll dice and collect any, many, uh, that many additional IPCs. This should be rough gate given to America. Um, yeah. Improved uh, mechanized infantry. Now each of your uh, mechanized infantry can be paired uh, with, with a tank uh, and has a uh, attack value of two. It's, oh, oh, here it is. Here it, it, it actually gave you what I was talking about. Uh, each of your, no, it didn't. Uh, each of your mechanized infantry unit that is paired with a tank or an artillery now has an attack value of two. So it, it's really good. Also, your mechanized infantry may now blitz without being paired with a tank. Oh, okay. Actually didn't know that. Super subs, attack value of three instead of two. And then I think the uh, uh, jet fighter is uh, attack value of four instead of three. In addition, bombing raids. During bombing raids, your escort or fighter now hit at a one and a two instead of just a one. Improved shipyards. This should be given to America right off the bat. Um, maybe in lieu of giving them more money. Submarines five, transport six, destroyer seven, cruisers. I like it. Radar, your anti aircraft fire both from a AAA and now hit on one and two instead of one. Cool. Well, long range aircraft, all of your, they increase by one space. So I would increase this by two because of drop tanks were significant economic um, advan uh, technological advances. Heavy bombers, um, when attacking, uh, you roll two dice for each bomber and select the best result. So I would go back to the original um, double damage. Uh, use both. Uh, yeah. All right. That's it. Uh, I have read through the Axis and Allies rulebook for you guys and given you commentary just because you wanted to spend two and a half hours with me. All right. Take care. Crack at 36 out.